OK. So the second analogy can only be applied if the thermal strain field, the word thermal is missing here, if the thermal strain field is integrable. The thermal strain field is integrable. Otherwise, it cannot be applied. Maybe many, in 19% of the cases, our thermal field is integrable. But there are many cases in which that's not true. For instance, I'll tell you, bridges. Bridges, well, let, let, me, let me just say, say something additional here. For instance, let's consider the case in which the material is homogeneous. So that means homogeneous, I recall. What does an homogeneous mean? Homogeneous means that dependence on space is zero. It doesn't exist. Okay? So uh, that, that means that, that in the case, the material, the property of the material, and in particular, the thermal expansion coefficient is constant. Okay? And then let's consider that the increment of temperature is linear in x, y, z. Okay? Okay. What happens with the thermal expansion term then is alpha delta t times 1. 1 is the tensor. So this, all terms of this thermal expansion is a, one, a, a linear polynomial because it's a constant times a linear polynomial. It's a linear polynomial. And look, what happens with this thermal strength here? It satisfies the compatibility equations. Why? Because I recall that the compatibility equations, so those conditions that said if a given invented, made up uh, a strain field could be integrate, integrable, just involved second order derivatives. So look, all second order derivatives, all second derivative of the product of this times this is how much? First derivative for instance, the second derivative of alpha delta t with respect to x, how much would that would be? Eight. No, the first derivative. And the second? Zero. Okay. The second derivative with respect to y is? The, mi the, the, the mixed derivative x, y would be? First derivative would be x, would be i, i, and the second derivative would be zero. So, for a linear polynomial, as is the product of this times that, and that means as all components of the thermal strains are, the second derivatives of epsilon are zero. So when, when I am checking if this polynomial is integrable, if this strength is integrable, I just would apply certain equations which always all terms are zero. Zero minus zero plus zero minus zero equals zero. So there, those, those equations, the compatibility conditions, will be uh, intrinsically fulfilled. Okay? So in that case, in that case where alpha delta theta is a polynomial of degree one, we can anticipate that the thermal strain field is integrable. What about if this is a second polynomial or if this is a linear polynomial and this a linear polynomial? We cannot say. You cannot say. Okay? So let's imagine a structure. For instance, a bridge. In bridges, thermal stresses play a role. Why? Because bridges are insulated. They are subjected during, day, during the day to the action of the sun, which increases temperature. Do you, mean the temp do you think the temperature is the same at the top part of the deck and the lower part of the deck? No, there are some shallow, and why why some people just, I mean, take shelter under, under, the, under the structures in order to get protection against rain and sun, too. So, there is a linear uh, distribution of temperatures from a top to bottom of the bridge deck. Is that temperature uh, linear? Well, it's assumed sometimes because it's easier. But in general, when you do measures, and if the width of the of the if the if the if the, if the, the width of the deck is uh, large, they are not linear. Or maybe temperatures are linear, but imagine that you have a mixed bridge made of steel and uh, concrete. Is alpha the expansion coefficient homogeneous? No. So in those cases, I can tell you that the second analogy is not applicable. Let's see uh, other structures where the temperature play a role. 
uh, dams. Dams, imagine a dam. This is a dam. This is the reservoir. I have the water here, and here I have the free air, right? And the insulation. So this, the, the, the downstream part of the, of the dam, is subjected to sun insulation, which changes in terms of the season and so on, and then night and night and so on, night and night and day and so on. What happens with the part of the, of the dam which is in contact with water? Is it at the same temperature as the other one? No. This is, so to, keep, so, to, so, so to speak, isolated or kept in a very similar, similar temperature because water is very uh, thermal uh, in, inertial. So temperature at the upper phase, up, upstream phase of the dam, is almost constant along the day, whereas temperature at the downstream is, uh, phase is just following the day-night temperatures. So can we say that the temperature inside the dam uh, is uniform? No. Can we say that it is linear? Not at all. Although the material concrete is homogeneous and then the uh, thermal expansions are homogeneous, we cannot say that this pro product here, that this product, alpha delta theta, is homogeneous, is linear. So these strains are in general not integral. So second analogy is not a good, a good way of facing the problem of comp calculating the impact of temperature into the stresses of the dam, if you are facing that problem. So in that case, the only resource you have is the first, the first, if you want to do by hand, or all, the only resource that engineers used to have before <coughs> numerical methods, before numerical methods, is just using first analogy. And you weren't taught about that. And now you know. And by the way, if you do the job of let the, 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 the dam expand and then recover, you are not doing well. Okay? That's not a good job. So these are the disadvantages of the second, of the second uh, uh, analogy. And also, on top of that, look, um, even if this is integral, you have to do it. You have to do the integration and so, so far, so far. So the only advantage, which is a big advantage, or the only cases, so to speak, in which the easiness of second analogy, the uh, physical uh, engineering understanding of the second, of the second analogy, is sweet, makes suitable the use of the second analogy, is the cases in which this is integral. And even more, the case in which the uh, therm temperature is constant everywhere, everywhere, and the material is homogeneous, so alpha is constant everywhere. In that case, the thermal strains are constant everywhere. And then, look, the solution of the thermal strains is trivial. Look, I anticipate that the solution is alpha delta theta times x, that's the thermal, plus something. That what is this something? Look, that is the general expression of a rigid body motion. That is the displacement, c, and omega is the rotation vector. I told you that this is the displacement, this omega being the rotation vector coming from a body, a body, a rigid body rotation, characterized by a vector which whose components axial vector is placed properly into this axis, uh, a screw symmetric tensor multiplied times x and c, this is the expression of rigid body movement. If you compute the gradient of that, the symmetric gradient of that, is the symmetric gradient of that, what is the gradient of that? That is alpha delta theta times one. What is the symmetric gradient? Alpha delta theta times one plus alpha delta theta times one, so one half, so alpha delta theta. So in other words, this solution fulfills the condition that the symmetric gradient of this is alpha delta theta times one, which is the thermal expansion. Okay, so, in other words, I can anticipate that under a constant temperature and a constant material, a constant um, expansion coefficient, the thermal solution of the thermal displacements is that one. 
alpha delta theta times x in terms of displacements plus a rigid body motion. This one can be any. That's my, it's my, in my advantage. I can choose this one in order to do that solution the easiest possible. That's something I can play with. Because anyway, what is th this doesn't affect the solution of the problem. That's important. And how is the, 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 the movement equation? Look, a, a particle which is placed at this point, x, has a displacement which is x plus alpha delta theta times x plus the rigid body motion. Let's, let's discard for the time being. So finally, that particle goes to the position, just taking that in common, 1 plus alpha delta theta times x. So this particle has moved in the same vector that was before, an expansion alpha delta theta. Okay? That is what ge in geometry is called an homothesis. You remember the, 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 the word homothesis? Homothesia in, in Spanish, homothesia. Okay? So that is a, a geometric uh, transformation of a body in which every point moves with respect to the reference point, let's see, the center of the the center of the um, of the, the region of coordinates and it's moved in the same direction it was a certain quantity and this is called the homotation ratio okay so this mathematically is an homotation of homo homotopy of homotopy ratio alpha delta theta and that's very easy to compute if i'll tell you what what would be the shape of this body if I apply an homothesis of factor alpha with respect to that origin. So you say, well, this point will go that way. Homothesis, keep the shapes. Keep the shapes, OK? Keep the shapes, and that's very easy to construct. So that solution, look, only for this case, that solution is trivial to construct. And then after that, constructed the homothesis, I just, at my convenience, I can add to the solution a rigid body motion. For instance, an homothesis like that, and then maybe that one, or maybe that one. Everything that is a rigid body motion. And at my convenience, I can do that in order to make the subsequent problem <coughs> the easier, the easiest possible. So, well, that is the, that is the situation. That is a situation, in that case, it's very easy. And then, when by resorting to these two things, first, that I don't need no real computation to compute the homothesis, the homothesis, and then that I can just choose an appropriate rigid body movement to make the real second analogy problem easier, then it's worth using the thermal, uh, the second thermal analogy. Okay?